Hello guys, today we're going to talk to continue our lesson in biochemistry. Let's start talking about isomers. What are isomers? Let's say someone gives you the molecular formula of a compound. Can you say for sure its structure or how those, let's say, carbon atoms are joined? And this is why we have isomers, because there are different organic compounds with the same molecular formula. All of those are called isomers. Let's see some categories. We've got the structural isomers. These types of isomers, they have the same structure, but they differ in the arrangement of the atoms. They have the same molecular formula, but they differ in the arrangement of their atoms. For instance, they all of these three have the molecular formula C4, let me write that down for you. Wait a minute. Okay. Let me write that down for you. C4, hydrogen, carbon 4, hydrogen 9, bromine. You see, they don't have all the same arrangement of their atoms. There are three possible structural isomers. Okay, now, there are the cis trans isomers, they have the same structure, but there is a difference in the space, how they are arranged in the space. For instance, you see here, we've got on this, on the same side, the two groups, but here they're on different sides. If they're on different sides, we call them trans. This is the trans version of this. And if they're on the same side, we call it it's in the cis version of this. So cis butinidioic. Okay, <laughs> I'm not really good in my accent. Okay, so we've got the cis and trans isomers. And last category, we've got the enantiomers. There are molecule, molecules that are mirror images of each other. We've got the L and D version. L is the left hand because they go in the left and D in the left here, and D is that. Now, I don't want to get into details like when Y is left handed and Y is right handed, the D version. No, I won't get into that. I want you to know that they are mirror images and no matter how you try to put one into the other, you see, like that, this is to an enantiomer, you see they are different. No matter how you try to turn it over, river, uh, around, clockwise, anticlockwise, 100 degrees, you will never have the same structure in the space as the, these two and they are called enantiomers. Okay, and like that we finish with our isomers. Again, this is chemistry and we will get into more details in the chemistry lessons. Now we've got carbohydrates. Um, we're going to look at biological molecules now, a series of biological molecules starting with carbohydrates and continuing with um, lipids, proteins and we'll end there. Okay. Um, give me a second, please. Okay. Carbohydrates. The general oh, oh dear God, yes. The general chemical formula of carbohydrates are this of monosaccharides. You see? Um, the word saccharides refers to a sugar. This means sugar. And carbohydrates can be either monosaccharides, disaccharides or polysaccharides. We will see what each of these are. Okay, now uh, what it's used is that the body uses them for fuel and as building materials. All of them, they consist in uh, of three elements, oxygen, hydrogen and carbon. And I told you about the three classes. Now monosaccharides have six carbon atoms, 12 hydrogen atoms, atoms and six oxygen atoms. Uh, they make ring structures and yes they make ring structures 
and the most common here is glucose, galactose and fructose. Okay, we've got two types of glucose, A glucose and B glucose, but this is alpha glucose actually and beta glucose, but it's not important. Again, it's not important. Okay, now a disaccharide mono means one. Disaccharide means two. So we've got two monosaccharides joined together and these two form a disaccharide. Okay, now the form the the reaction in which two monosaccharides join together it's called the condensation reaction. And we've got the release of one had one water molecule, as you can see here. And the reverse reaction when one disaccharide, see this is a disaccharide, is being, this is a disaccharide, I'm sorry, is being, what, separated into two monosaccharides. Here we don't have two monosaccharides though, but this is the condensation and hydrolysis reaction we're going to look at. Okay, we need one molecule of water in order to do that. Okay. So the disaccharides, they consist of two monosaccharides joined together with the release of one molecule of water by the process as dehydration synthesis. Why it's called dehydration synthesis? Because we've got the release of one molecule of water or condensation. You need to know the three disaccharides, the three monocoma disaccharides, and why, what they're made of. I told you. We've got three monosaccharides, glucose, galactose, and fructose. Glucose and glucose gives us maltose. Glucose and galactose gives us lactose. And glucose and fructose gives us sucrose. Okay, these are all sugars. This is the common sugar. This is found in milk. Okay, I won't get into more details right now. Now, what I want to know is something that I haven't written here. The bond between the two monosaccharides, this bond that is being created, is called a glycosidic bond. Let me try to write that down for you. Glycosidic bond okay guys this is a, a glycosidic bond and it is this bond right here it's between two monosaccharides you will tell me this is not a glycosidic bond we're not talking about this because we've got two monosaccharides so one unit and one unit okay these are joined together with a glycosidic bond now, if we've got many now uh, monosaccharides together, more than two, two monosaccharides joined together are called disaccharides. A polysaccharide is a polymer whose subunits are monosaccharides joined together by glycosidic bonds. Okay. Now, these are micromolecules, they're big, and we've got four polysaccharides you need to know. We've got cellulose. Cellulose is the most abundant organic molecule on the planet due to its presence in plant cell walls and its low rate of breakdown in nature. It has a structural role, a mechanically strong molecule, unlike starch and glycogen. However, Cellulose is found in plants, okay, and it's made wrong, I told you it's to make up plant cells. Now starch is found in plant cell in plants as well, and it is a mixture of two substances, amylose and amylopectin. Okay, amylose is made by condensations between alpha glucose molecule. Okay, uh, I won't get into details of that. Starch is never found in animal cells. Instead, 
uh, a substance with molecules very like those of amylopectin is used as storage carbohydrate in plant cells, in animal cells, and it's called glycogen. It has, um, I'm sorry, it's a storage carbo carbohydrate. Okay, and we will see into chemistry lessons or in the in the university biochemistry you will see that it's a big molecule with many many branches, many many bonds. So what does the body use? Why do we call it structural? Because any time the body wants some energy, it just breaks up this very big molecule and it creates much much energy because it's breakdown. How do we call it? It's hydrolysis reaction releases energy okay um, and last we have got cheating I'm not sure if I'm calling it right I'm not sure it's found in animals and it makes up exoskeleton in arthropod arthropod arthropods what arthropods like um, um, the fly, house fly. Okay, it's an arthropod. Okay, now. Um, I want you to talk a little bit about cellulose to tell you some things more because it's really important. Um, a cell wall typically has several layers of fibers running in different directions to increase strength. Cellulose makes up about 20 to 40 percent of the average cell wall. Okay, these cellulose fibers have a very high tensile strength, almost equal to that of steel. This, that, this means that if pulled at both ends, they are very difficult to stretch or break and makes it possible for a cell to withstand the large pressures that developed within it as a result of osmosis. Without the wall, the cell will burst when in a dilute solution. These pressures help to provide support for the plant by making tissues rigid and are responsible for cell expansion during growth. The arrangement of fibers around the cell helps determine the shape of the cell as it grows. But despite their strength, cellulose fibers are freely permeable, allowing water and solutes to reach or leave the cell surface membrane. So, the plant cell wall does not, is not a, actually a wall in the meaning that it's impermeable to substances. It is just a structural wall. Okay, now we're going to look at the second category of biological molecules, which are lipids. Now, it's different to it's difficult, I'm sorry, to define precisely what we mean by lipid because lipids are a very varied group of chemicals. They are all organic molecules which are insoluble in water. Okay, this is their common characteristic that they are insoluble to water. Um, the most material, the most common are, I don't know, are, yes, are fats and oils. But there are other types of lipids like waxes and steroids. They're all hydrophobic, which say what that means. Now, let's see what fatty acids are. I tell you that they consist of one glycerol and three fatty acids. This is not all lipids. Not all lipids consist of one glycerol and three fatty acids. Only triglycerides, which are fats and oils, the most common. Okay. Now, what are fatty acids? I'm telling you three fatty acids. Okay. It's a hydrocarbon chain. You, you see that? It's a hydrocarbon chain. Why it's called hydrocarbon? Because it has only hydrogen and carbon atoms with a carboxyl group at one end. Here it is. Okay. Now, fatty acids can be saturated or unsaturated, as you see here. What is the difference between those two? Here, we don't have double bonds, we only have single bonds, I'm sorry, between carbon atoms. Only single bonds between carbon atoms. Here, we can have one or more double bonds between 
carbon atoms. For instance, you will tell me that here I got a double, but it is not between carbon atoms, it's between one carbon and one oxygen atom. We need it to be between carbon atoms in order to be unsaturated. Okay, now saturated fatty acids have many things in common. They are, come from animals. They are solid at room temperature. When ingested, a large quantities are leaked to heart disease. That means they are the unhealthy kind of fatty acids. And one example is, ace, is butter. And what are saturated is the fatty acid which contains single bonds between carbon atoms. Moving on to unsaturated now fatty acids. They are extracted from plants. They are liquid at room temperature. They are good dietary fats and they have at least one double bond. Now we've got some exceptions. and I, I told you that they're good dietary fats, not all of them. We've got some... Is, I'm sorry, one exception is the group of tropical oils such as coconut and palm oil that are saturated, somewhat solid at room temperature and are as healthy as are fats extracted from animals. Okay, um, also I would like to tell you that, um, for instance, palm oil is found in Nutella. Okay, just to give you an example. So, unsaturated can be monounsaturated and polyunsaturated. Monounsaturated if we have only one double bond between carbons. Okay. Polyunsaturated fatty acid if it has more than one, like two or more. Okay. Double bonds. Now, I told you that this is the common structure of a triglyceride. What a triglyceride what consists of? The most common lipids are the triglycerides. Triglycerides, actually, I'm sorry for the accent. I'm sorry, triglycerides. These are fats and oils. A glyceride is an ester formed by a fatty acid com combining with the alcohol glycerol. This is glycerol. Let me go back to show you this picture. This is glycerol, you see. It is one alcohol that has three carbon atoms with three hydroxyl groups attached to each carbon atom. Okay. Each one of these hydrogel groups is able to undergo a condensation reaction. What is the condensation reaction? This. A condensation reaction with one fatty acid. That means we have got one glycer with one fatty acid, one glycer with two fatty acids, and one glycer with three fatty acids. One glycer with three fatty acids is called triglyceride. Okay, these uh, details, what are the details, the fatty acids, can vary in length, depending on the fatty acids used. Okay, um, they are insoluble in water, but are soluble in certain organic solvents, like um, ether, chloroform, and ethanol. This is because of the non-polar nature of the hydrocarbon tails. They have no uneven distribution of electrical charge. Therefore, they will not mix freely with water molecules and are described as hydrophobic. Okay. Now, why triglycerides exist? What is their role? First of all, lipids in general, they make excellent energy reserves because they are even richer in carbohydrates and atoms that are carbohydrates. A given mass of lipid will therefore yield more energy in oxidation than the same mass of carbohydrate, an important advantage for a storage product. Um, more exactly, a carbohydrate, one gram of any carbohydrate will release four calories when burned. Instead, one gram of any lipid will release nine calories per gram when burned in a calorie meter. Okay. So they give more energy. They're good energy reserves. Now, fat is stored in a number of places in the human body. 
particularly just below the dermis of the skin and around the kidneys. Below the skin, it also acts as an insulator against loss of heat. Okay, fat is made up of lipids. Now, um, blubber is a lipid found in sea mammals. Oh, I forgot to see here. I'm sorry. Found in sea mammals. Like whales. And except... And it has the insulator function, but as well, it provides buoyancy. Do we all know what is buoyancy? Buoyancy is the force. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. I apologize. It's the force. Let's say this is water. No, wait a minute. Let's say, nope, blue. Let's say this is water, okay? This is all water, 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 water. This is water. Now, if I put in here a box, to me, it may stay up here. You know why? Because there is a force acting on it from the water that has this, this force. This force is called buoyancy. Holds stay in in the top of the water. Now animals like whales can stay here up and not always drown because they need to come in the surface of water in order to get oxygen. Why? Because their skin has blubber and they provides buoyancy. Now also an unusual role of for lipids is as a metabolic source of water. When oxidized in respiration, they are converted to carbon dioxide and water. This water can be of importance in very dry habitats. For example, the desert kangaroo rat, this here rat, which stays in the desert, okay, desert, desert, okay, I don't know, um, never drinks water and survives solely on metabolic water from its fat intake. Okay? Now, uh, lastly, we've got a very special type of lipid, which are phospholipids. Its molecule has the unusual property of having one end which is soluble in water. Now, let me get into more detail. Um, one of the three fatty acid molecules in tri triglycerides is replaced by a phosphate group. Here. You see? We had the structure of a triglyceride here. We take one fatty acid and we put a phosphate group. Okay? Now, the phosphate group has a charge has a charge, therefore it is polar, it's hydrophilic, but the rest of the molecule is hydrophobic. So we've got this structure, this is called the head, and these are called tails. So we've got a phospholipid, has a structure of, I'm sorry, has a structure of hydrophilic head and hydrophobic tails. Okay, uh, when phospholipids are added to water, they self-assemble. This is really important. They do it on their own. They don't need an enzyme. They don't need the cell to tell, to tell them to do it. So they do it on their own. It's their chemistry that makes it happen. They self-assemble into a double-layer structure. This called a bi layer here. We've got a phospholipid bilayer. The phosphate is on the outside here and the carbohydrates and the 
hydrophobic, I'm sorry, tails are on the inside, sealed it from water by their phosphate heads. This phospholipid bilayer is the structural basis of all plasma membranes and it forms the boundary between the inside of the cell and its external environment. Okay, and later when we will look into the cell and its plasma membrane, we will see its biological importance to more in depth. Now, what I want you to understand here is that um, yes, phospholipids are called amphipathic molecules. Why? They are called amphipathic molecules because they are both hydrophilic and hydrophobic. Okay. Okay, let's move on. Yes, I want you to tell you here that um, let's say a hydrophilic substance wants to enter the cell. We, we said that this is the plasma membrane structure. Can it enter the cell, the hydrophilic substance? No, because these tails are hydrophobic and therefore no hydrophilic substances can enter the cells through this. But we'll see that there are the cell has ways in order to allow hydrophilic substances to enter the cell. But no, not by passing through the phospholipid bilayer. Okay, now let's go ahead and talk about the last type of lipids. And we've got steroids. Steroids are lipids that do not have the same general structure as other lipids. Instead, they consist of four linked carbon rings. This is called a steroid backbone. One, two, three, four carbon link, four carbon rings linked, and it is called a steroid backbone. Now here we have different types of groups and Depending on the type of group, we've got different steroids. We got, for instance, cholesterol, we've got testosterone, estradiol, estrogen. Okay, do we know do you know testosterone? Have you heard it before? It's the male hormone. It's a hormone, and estrogen is a female hormone. So some steroids are hormones. Therefore, lipids can serve endocrine functions. Okay, thank you very much, and we're done. In the next uh, lesson, we're going to look into proteins, enzymes, and with, in this way, we will finish the biochemical, the biochemistry, the introduction to biochemistry. Thank you very much. Bye.